people than we can. So I just think we should be better at that, you know? And I, I just think in, in our homes and on the street, on our workplace, everywhere, and I think we've got to be the ones that are setting up. And it's not, you know, we've got to be real. You know, we're not, we're not fake. It's not, it's not fake it till you make it, but at the end of the day, we can change an atmosphere by our words, right? I'll tell you a, a small story. I'm a, uh, an ex-football player. AFL was my, um, my game, not at a high level, but it was my game. And I and, uh, just wanted to set a short story. I, I was having a, a good day one day, getting a kick, maybe just kicked a goal or something like that. And there was a senior player on the other team who came up to me after I'd done something pretty good. I thought I was pretty good, or maybe I told him so. And uh, one of the senior guys who played a lot of games, and knew he played a lot of games, he came up to me, he grabbed me by the collar, I think after I kicked the goal or something like that, he grabbed me by the collar, he looked at me, and he said, you're a bleak player. I don't think I touched the football again for the rest of the day. Right? There's life and death in the power of the tongue. Now, look, that's a football analogy, but the reality is we can, we can speak life yeah. and we can speak death with this, this, this member, our yeah. tongue. So yeah, well. really, we've got to be the people that, that got to stand up and say good things to each other. Yeah, so, amen. Amen. Um, you know, just find every opportunity to do it. Like I said, it's not fake. You know, we all have our things. We, we've all got our issues in our life. And, you know, the reality is we just got to try to break through that. Uh, and, you know, saying good words, encouraging people around you is the way to, to, to lift up people around you and yourself. So um, that's, a, I, I think, a good, good word for us. Um, as I said before, I love, love the fact that the Holy Spirit was lifted up today. This place is filled with the Holy Spirit. And we're going to take that into the world. Right? It doesn't end here on Sunday. Um, I'm only going to speak for, for three minutes or so, so in that time I just wanted to, to really go through three things. The first was, was to tell you who Jesus is. Um, the second was to encourage you to understand who we are, who you are. And then thirdly, just a bit of instruction in terms of what we must do. Um, so who is he? Jesus the Christ. Born in a virgin birth, lived a sinless life, was crucified. And he rose again. So you've heard the gospel already this morning. So nobody has an excuse. That, you know, you'll hear the gospel in this place. You, you hear Pastor Chris preach holiness. Right? So that, that is the gospel there wrapped up. So I want to want to read from Hebrews 12 and 1 uh, just to bless you a little bit about the Christ. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is so easily ensnaring us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He was crucified for us, and that's, that's what we, we remember when we come to this time of communion, an important part of our, our service. Jesus is the beginning and the end the Alpha and the Omega. And we, as people on earth today, we, we exist somewhere in the, in the middle of the beginning and the end. Uh, you'll notice that there is wars and rumours of wars. It was mentioned already today that we're, we're living in the last times. Um, and for that middle period where we are, he sent the Holy Spirit. And we've, we've witnessed the Holy Spirit today in our service. And during that time, from when Jesus walked the earth to when he returns, we are the defenders of the faith. So, well, why don't you do that? Why don't you tell the person next to you, you are a defender of the faith. So that's, it. that's our role. It's our job to be his hands and feet until he returns. That's who we are. We are the defenders of the faith Amen. until he returns. It's a battle. We've heard that as well. Thank you, brother. Yeah. So what, what must we do while we're here? Psalm 82 and 3 tells us, defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Amen. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. Does it sound familiar? It's good. We do that around here? Yeah. And what about on a personal level? Our own sins. Pastor Chris talked about it. We need to be holy. Amen. We need to be holy. But we're all guilty. So let's not beat around the bush. We're all guilty. You know, there's, not, there's nobody in here that's better than anybody else. We're all guilty. But he died for us all. Yeah. Amen. And that's, that's what this communion time is around, is about. And we come around the, the table of the Lord. Uh, but on a personal level, we, re, we remember Jesus at communion time. 
and we examine ourselves. So Isaiah 1 and 16 says, wash out yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Let's stand to our feet and we'll partake together this important time of communion as we remember him.